I am in the mountains of Vermont, fishing this beautiful mountain stream. Welcome to Trekking Outdoors. I'm near Fort Worth, Texas. And Texas, can you please turn the furnace off? Anyway. Just picked up a load that's going to Greenland, New Hampshire. Not an area that I'm used to going to, but I requested it because I was actually invited to go with a friend of mine up to his cabin in the mountains of Vermont for a, a weekend fishing trip. So I got a load going up there. So it's gonna be quite the adventure. It's a long trip coming from Fort Worth, Texas, all the way to Greenland, New Hampshire. We're gonna be going through some great parts of the country. All right, you know, joke about the uh, the weather down here being so hot and it has been but uh, it's actually not too bad today it's a crisp 95 degrees with only about I don't know 85% humidity so I mean that is that could be on the South Pole compared to what it has been down here Glad tonight is uh, shower night. Cause, you know, first thing you want to do when you start a over 1,000 mile trip is to, you know, work up a nice good sweat. Here we go. through the big D and I do mean Dallas and just getting on some uh, fuel here because we got a long trip to go checking everything over making sure everything's still tight and you know the drill everything's looking good that ain't going nowhere ready to roll clean full tummy full tanks and only 1,504 miles to go. Let's go. Welcome to day two. So, 
made it near Nashville last night. Pretty decent ride. Just doing a little checks here. Running late uh, into the night. Usually means lots of bugs on the windshield. So I'm gonna clean the windshield, check the load here. Everything's looking good. Do my pre-trip and get back on the road. Still got about 1,200 miles to get all the way up into New England. So gonna be a full day again today. It's getting ridiculous out here. Three bucks for a cup of coffee. Three dollars for a cup of coffee. Oh, I must be at Starbucks or something fancy. No, cheap truck stop, been on the burner all night coffee. Three bucks. This world's going crazy. I'm telling you. made it up to the Virginia, West Virginia line, so about 700 miles for the day. That's about all I can do. So I'm putting on some fuel here before bedtime. Check this out. Yeah, prices are not going the right way here. Right? Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Anyway, we are about 500 miles from the delivery up in New Hampshire. So it's gonna be up, bright and shiny in the morning. Deliver, we got a two o'clock delivery appointment tomorrow afternoon up in Greenland, New Hampshire, right up by Portsmouth. And then from there, up into Vermont. So, all right, see you guys in the morning. Day three in the road. Welcome to the Poconos. We're in northeastern Pennsylvania, Pocono Mountain. So, making our way up to New England. Should be there on time. So, delivered this afternoon and tonight we'll be in the mountains of Vermont. Well, we made it. 1,867 miles from Fort Worth, Texas, all the way to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Lots of long ways. But I do love being up here. It is uh, really neat to see the different scenery up in, up in New England. It is, it's absolutely gorgeous up here. There's just a little too many people up here. But anyway, and plus, New Hampshire has the best state motto in the union. I mean, live free or die? Come on. If I was from New Hampshire, oh, that would be tattooed right directly across my chest. How awesome is that? So I'm going to get opened up and we're going to get unloaded and then we're off to Vermont. We're empty. Let's go fishing. Oh, 
On our way up to the cabin here, we're doing a quick little stop for, for lunch at this little uh, uh, cafe, roadside, diner, supper club. I would call it a supper club in Wisconsin. I don't know if they call them that out here. But, uh, yeah, the Moose Look. Where are we at? Moose Look Diner. Oh, yeah, we're out. We're at the Northeast, so there's, everything's diners out here. And what town are we in? Concord, Vermont. So, should be good. Well, we made it. We're in Northeast Vermont at my friend Don Koch's cabin. Don is also an owner operator at D&E Transport. That's how I met him. He was nice enough to invite me up here for a weekend of chasing trout around the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. So Don, thanks for having me. Good to have you here. All right, so what can you tell me about the cabin? Well, my, my mother's father built this camp with a few friend, hunting friends in uh, 1964 the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. They basically just used it a couple times a year for rabbit and bird hunting. Uh -huh. Around 1989, I think it was, he uh, decided he was no longer uh, interested or able to keep coming up to the camp, so he turned his share of the camp over to my father. Uh, we've been coming up for uh, rabbit and partridge, uh, as well as adding fish, and we do some deer hunting, and this year I have a moose permit, so yeah. I'll be hunting moose up here. This area is full of resources, let me tell you. It is it is great up here. Right. Yep. So, again, Don, thanks again for having me here, and uh, it's going to be a great weekend. All right. All right. We're getting ready for dinner. Welcome to Shucking Outdoors. <laughs> Please don't tune out. Keep watching. I promise. The jokes will get better. What is for dinner tonight there, Don? I believe it's going to be pulled pork and corn. Nice. Well, obviously corn. <laughs> We're going to be out on a beautiful mountain lake. Try and catch some trout. I guess there's all kinds of trout in here. Rainbows, browns. Um, lake trout are the big species out here. And um, there's even some landlocked salmon. So we'll see. I'm going to take this beautiful piece of marine equipment out and see what we can do well we got updates this uh marine machine here isn't pumping any water there should be there should be water that cools the engine coming out of that little opening right there and nothing Let's just say we're not going too far from the landing. We're gonna still go out on this gorgeous lake and this beautiful day, and we're gonna see what we got, see what we can do. We still have, we still have backup. It's fine, it's fine. So here's the plan. We're gonna be going upwind and then just drifting back through. We're seeing fish at about anywhere between 10 to 20 feet down. So we're gonna just be doing some vertical jigging. We don't have the capability of trolling because we don't want to overheat the motor. So we're just gonna play the wind and vertical jig our way back across where we're seeing fish. So hopefully the strategy pays off. We've got a lovely day, a little mountain rain coming. That's all right, we're fine. We're fine. Right there. Wow. Oh my gosh. Going for your lure? I hope not. That mark that we just saw at 25 feet is probably the bait that he's chasing. He or she is chasing. 
not afraid of us. No. He just hit my line. Hi. <laughs> that is pretty. I've seen a lot of loons fishing in northern Wisconsin, but I've never had one hang out right in front of me like this before. That is cool. Here he is again. fishing the rivers, you know, like trout fishing should be. So, we're gonna hit a few spots and hopefully we can finally get some fish on the shore. Well, it's time to see how big of a mess I can make with a fly rod. You know, I'm not much of a fly fisherman, I don't have a whole lot of experience, but there's no time like the present to make a mess. Let's see what we can do. It also doesn't help that there's not a whole lot of room between the trees. Hey, we're at a, uh, a little gift shop and little station right outside of Bonville, Vermont, Bloomfield, Bloomfield. Um, and they've got a big game reporting station. Like, you know, you should go out and you shoot something and, and you can come here and put it on like uh, a brag board, you know, something like that. So I just want to show you guys uh, what we got here and what uh, everybody's getting around the area. So we got bear and deer. And down here, I wanted to show you this. Look at that. A squirrel. Must have been a big one. Look at that. 127 pound squirrel. Seems legit to me. That's crazy. Alright, spot number two. This is the Nohegan River. Just outside of Bloomfield, Vermont, this is where the Nulhegan dumps into the Connecticut River. Now the Connecticut River is the border between Vermont and New Hampshire. I don't know what it has to do with Connecticut, 
but that's what we got. I know it looks pretty fishy. Let's see what we can do. I can tell you they got their fair share of mosquitoes around here. Holy Oh, I got one. There we go. There we go. Ah. Oh, it's a nice brown. Brown or a brook. Oh. Easy, easy. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. That is a beautiful Vermont, I believe it's a brown trout. I don't know, brown or a brook trout. Is there a difference? I don't know, but we got one. <laughs> He's going back anyway, don't worry. Right. There he goes. And the Truckin' Outdoors Foxtail Custom Rod Gets it done. Yeah! We're going to go for a little walk. Maybe get up stream, upstream a little bit. I can see a little, uh, little area up here. Let's try for another one. And it's raining again. But I don't even care. We're on the board, baby. Another one. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, it's another one. It's just, it's the same species, just a little smaller and much more crazy. Holy cow. Dude, I'm gonna throw you back. Woo! I got two. There's probably more in here, but hey, you know what? It's time to go across the road and we're gonna fish on the border of Vermont and New Hampshire on the Connecticut River. So three states, three states? I don't know. I, hopefully there's fish. We'll move down to the Connecticut River here. So that right over there is New Hampshire. We got fish. Oh yeah, first cast, baby. Oh, nice rainbow. Oh, no! Nice rainbow trout. Nice rainbow, about 12 inches long. Well, it's all right. Get another one. Oh, that's the hard part about fishing from the bank. I really should have waders on. I should be in the water so I don't have to drag them up, but it's all right. Here we go. There's another one. Here we go. Come on. It's a little smaller than the other one, but that's all right. There we go. All right, easy now. 
out, buddy. These look good, that's for sure. There we go. Alright, easy. Check that out. Beautiful rainbow. Not much for size, but that's alright. We'll take it. We're catching fish. There we go. Oh, and the sun's coming out now. Love it. Sun's coming out. And it's raining again. All right, well, time to get back to camp. It is getting on dinner time. So we're gonna head back to camp and I'll probably do some fishing in the stream behind the camp. At least just give it a shot, so. All right, we're back at the camp. Supper's being made right here. So while supper's being made, I'm just gonna fish in the stream right behind the cabin for a while. You know what? Hold on. I'm gonna try something. All right. Well, caught fish on my awesome foxtail custom fishing rod. Now, it's time to do it the old-fashioned way. I am not much of a fly fisherman. Okay, I'm not any kind of a fly fisherman. So, if you're a fly fisherman and you're watching this, you might want to wrap some duct tape around your head because your head might explode. But, we're going to try it, all right? Everybody's got to learn sometimes, so, you know, cut me some slack. We'll see what we can do. We'll see how many times I can get tangled up. How's that sound? Well, so much for fly fishing. My uh, fly snapped off and I have my goggle box here. My fly box is back at the cabin. So I guess we'll just have to continue with the little rooster tail that's been so good. Little, little rooster tail has been locked in. So keep fishing. locked in. Told you this rooster tail's locked in. Oh wow, that is beautiful. That is a gorgeous fish. It's not big, but stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop. Look at that. 
look how beautiful that is. Let's get him back. Woo. That's five. have a replacement for that lure right now. Let's go get it back. We got it. Well, it's okay. Fine. Since I'm wet, we might as well go upstream. Another beauty. Just unbelievable. Oh, this has just been an absolute blast today. I mean, this whole trip has been great unbelievable scenery we finally got into some fish today this afternoon you know got to get out onto a nice deep mountain lake and just experience that so i tell you looking up and down this this river while i'm fishing here i just keep watching waiting for moose to come walking by that would be terrifyingly awesome, or awesomely terrifying. So, all right, well, I think, it's, I think supper is ready. So I'm gonna head back into the cabin and uh, we'll probably pick this up tomorrow. This might just be the last bit of fishing. So, so this has been an absolute success. All right. Now we just got to get across the river. Well, 
<laughs> it's a little deep right here. You know, it's not bad, except for the giant boulders make it very hard to get around. All right, well, it is the uh, the beginning of day three, and unfortunately, it's the day to go home. And, and it's as, the nicest day. Exactly, <laughs> and that's the way it always goes, isn't it? It's always the nicest day yeah. on the day you got to go home. But I'm here with Tom Koch. He is one of the uh, the current members of the uh, ownership group of this, uh, of this cabin, and I have had the privilege of sharing this camp with him for the last uh, few days and I've heard plenty of stories on how this uh, this camp came to be so can you tell us a little bit about how this camp uh, uh, well we're really happy that we're, you were able to join us this weekend but in 1964 they built this camp my father-in-law was one of the seven and he designed the whole thing I was talking to the only re uh, living original members just a couple weeks ago and he said my father-in-law had this thing planned out so well that he thinks uh, they only had about three pieces of lumber left over. <laughs> wow, that is yeah. good engineering. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, he, he, good planning. He was quite a guy. <laughs> um, so anyway, what we have in there is uh, eight bunks, a big table, and uh, a, a counter and stove. We used to have a uh, gas-operated refrigerator, but uh, that got kind of dangerous when we took it out. Sure, sure. You have so, just the basics in here. Just the basics. Yeah, which is what a camp in the woods in the mountains should be. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, of the seven members, you know, they 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 all but one has died. Others have given their shares to their uh, children and grandchildren. Sure. And uh, we now have officially. Ten members. I can imagine that you've uh, enjoyed bringing your family up and sharing some of the traditions that have. Well, it depends what you're talking about with family. My wife won't come. <laughs> I can, I can, uh, I can definitely understand that. I'm uh, pretty sure that my wife wouldn't come either. <laughs> she, she Love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> We've had an awful good time. This was originally a rabbit, rabbit camp, and sure. that uh, that's. I was first invited by my father-in-law in 1971. Yeah. Uh, Sally and I got married in 1970, so. Yeah. 71 was my first tr trip up here. We, we have a lot of restrictions on land. We have restrictions on the transfer of this land. Yeah. And we, we got some changes in when we got a new governor. And now uh, we have a lease on this place. Uh, it's, it's renewable every five years, but it goes in, in fact, until 19, uh, until 2078. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we have the option of removing the camp and taking it with us. Right. Or abandoning it. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, Basically giving it to the yeah. state. Well, you and, know, I'm not going to care, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Donald will be 104. Yeah. And, and my grandson might be the only one around. Who... But I can tell you, I've seen several camps up and down. And you think of uh, the tr traditions that you and the, the leaseholders now yeah. and the group have shared. And multiply that by all of the camps that are in the area. That's a lot of tradition and a lot of history yeah. that may be uh, be stopped in yeah. that in that well, time. Well, part of so. the part of the push on the, on the part of these out of staters who don't really understand the nature of things around <laughs> here, right? Was to abolish all uh, all of they wanted all the camps removed. Actually, yeah. One legislator actually said to me, "Well." It, unless everybody can have a camp up there, nobody should have a camp up there. Mm. And this ding dong was actually elected to the legislature. Oh, wow. So <laughs> uh, we formed what's called the Vermont Traditions Coalition. And actually one of our members, Steve McLeod, became the executive director and did a lot of lobbying. Okay. And, and one of your members here at the camp. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. Steve McLeod. And his father was one of the original members. Yeah. And uh, his father uh, and and the dog, the beagle Axel, was the nastiest damn dog. 
<laughs> the only one who could go near him was, uh, was his own. <laughs> Anybody else go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they all have their own personalities, don't they? <laughs> yep, they do. So, so Steve did a lot of lobbying, and it was quite successful, and particularly with the new administration with uh, Jim Douglas as governor. And we got some changes through. Good. And, uh, but the, the fight continues. Yeah. And, I wanted you to, to ask you about your uh, maple syrup business, yeah. too. So um, so you have a, a maple syrup business, as a lot of people do in, in Vermont. You know, that's, that's kind of the, the thing in Vermont, whereas uh, Wisconsin has its cheese, Vermont has its maple syrup. Yep. Um, so tell me a little bit about your maple syrup business. Well, this year we made, uh, I think it was 54 gallons. Oh, wow. Um, that's, yeah. We, we expect to do better than that next year. Sure. That's, uh, that is excellent. How many acres do you run typically? Well, it's not all maple land that we have sure. there. It's not a, uh, not 175 acres. It's probably 10 acres okay. that are involved with the sure. uh, that, growing that's, sap. I would imagine that uh, keeps you pretty busy around that time of year. It does. Yeah. But when the sap is running, that's all you're doing. Yeah, I believe it. Well, um, the, uh, Tom was good enough to give me a, a was that a pint or a quart? That was, that was a quart. A quart, a quart of maple syrup to take back to Wisconsin. And uh, what he doesn't know is he'll be getting some Wisconsin cheese here in a, in a little bit. So Well, we have a little problem with that. <laughs> Wisconsin dyes its cheese yellow and ours is pure white. Well, it's been going back and forth all weekend like this. <laughs> Well, Tom, again, thank you very much for having me up. It's, it's been, been a great a weekend and a pleasure. And, and thanks for sharing this with me. you got some good fish. Yes, we got some good fish and some great memories and great experiences. So, again, thank you very much. Well, and I hope you can come again. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, as you can see, we made it back into civilization. And I got to tell you, it was an amazing weekend up in the mountains of Northeast Vermont. I want to say thank you to Tom and Don Koch for inviting me up for sharing your cabin and, and that area with me. And I did get a souvenir mug, so sorry, honey. Thank you all of you for watching. Make sure you go to truckingoutdoors.com, get some awesome merch, and until next time, keep the shiny side up.